may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Amen. Have you ever wanted somebody to do something for you, but were afraid to ask? Maybe you thought they might say no or reject you. Maybe you thought that what you wanted was too much to ask or that you weren't worthy. Perhaps you were afraid of what you might actually get. It can be easy for us to underestimate ourselves, to convince ourselves that we really don't have any business asking. And yet, we all have needs that we long to have filled. Into this wondering, we find Jesus, his disciples, and a large crowd departing Jericho when Bartimaeus, a local blind beggar, shouts out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The crowd recoils. They are offended and embarrassed by him, and they don't want his interruption. And so they say, shut up, be quiet. They try to silence him. But Bartimaeus doesn't care. He knows that Jesus has what he wants and needs. And so he goes after it, shouting even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. He boldly displays that he has faith in Jesus to give him what he needs, what he wants. And it is in this moment that Jesus, hearing him, stops. Have you stopped when a beggar or a homeless person on the corner or hanging out with a sign outside of a store calls to anyone who will listen for help? We know the discomfort of seeing our neighbors in such a state of living. And when they call out to us for help, we may find ourselves feeling anxious and embarrassed and maybe even a little afraid. For if we were to stop and engage them and courageously ask, what do you want me to do for you? What might their response be? I'm hungry. Or I need money. Most of us, in some way, could respond to those needs. But what about needs that seem greater than our ability to give, our ability to respond? Might our fear of their answer or our preconceived ideas about what they might want from us keep us from stopping to listen? We may have faith that God provides for those in, needs, in need, but yet often we fail to trust that God has given us all that we need to be able to help others. And it can be easy, very easy, to jump to conclusions, certain that we already know what someone needs or what they're going to say or what they're going to ask. Such assumptions can get in the way of our truly hearing others. Here's an example. A friend of mine recently told me that she bought five $25 grocery store gift cards to keep in her purse so that when she encountered a homeless person, she could give one to them. While her care and her concern for the others is genuine, and it arose out of a true desire to help, I wonder if something might be missing. Rather than 
asking them what they want rather than courageously dialoguing to find out what the need is. It is she who has decided what they need. In today's gospel, Jesus sees and he engages and he shows those on the fringes. Hearing Bartimaeus' shout, Jesus stops and he hears. And then he calls the crowd to call Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus to him. This is the same crowd who moments before was trying to silence this beggar. But now they come to Bartimaeus with excitement and generous encouragement, saying, get up. He's calling you. Something shifted in their view. And so casting off the only earthly possession he has, Bartimaeus gets up, he leaps up, and he comes to Jesus. And what transpires next is important. For Jesus does not assume that Bartimaeus wants to be made able to see. He doesn't, Bartimaeus, sees his blindness as a disability. Rather, he simply asks, what do you want me to do for you? With this one question, Jesus gives this man agency. And in allowing him to respond for himself, is able to hear what he most wants. Teacher, let me see. It is the same for us. Jesus doesn't impose his will upon us, nor make assumptions about what we need or what we want. With the same expression of care and love, Jesus asks us, what do you want me to do for you? It's not a simple question, is it? But Jesus' words invite us to delve deeper spiritually, to sit with the question, and to consider seriously our answer. And as we do this, we may find at first that our answers are very broad, perhaps not even focused upon ourselves. Yet, if we answer the question and then ask it again and answer it again and then ask it again and answer it again, with each new answer, we may draw closer to discovering what it is that we most want from God. For Bartimaeus, the answer was, let me see. What if his answer was the same for us? You may remember a few weeks ago when we sang together a prayer, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Together, we prayed to God to help us to see. To see how loved we are. To see how hungry for love others are. To see how worthy and precious and beautiful and wonderful our neighbors are. To see that we, like Bartimaeus, can put our trust in this huge, overwhelming, and amazing love from the one who created us, who loves us, and who works in and through us. I hope that you will take time in the coming week to prayerfully Sit with Jesus' question. What do you want me to do for you? 
And then consider, what is it that you most want Jesus to do for you? Amen.